Okay, so uh, 3D experience, project management, just a, an intro here real quick um, before we get into it's kind of a, a more of a hands-on uh, video. Um, so just some of the features of the, the platform and the application. Um, project management allows you to have uh, project analytics. And again, all this stuff that we talk about here, you will see um, once we pull up the video here. So you'll have project analytics. Um, for project management, you're able to create budgets for each project um, and track against those budgets. Um, it's all real time. Um, you are able to manage resources for each project um, and their time worked on the project. So resources, meaning employees or contractors or people that are assigned to the project. Okay. Um, you can schedule meetings um, from within the application itself. Uh, you can interact with all members of the platform uh, using discussions. So there is a, an object in the system within the project management application called discussions. And you can create different discussions to uh, talk amongst each other that are in the project uh, to see any kind of notes and things that are going on with each project, any nuances that are going on, um, anything that's not maybe not covered in a meeting or something like that. Um, you can track all the decisions that are made during each phase of the project. So if in a meeting, um, there's a decision that's made, you can track that. Okay, so you can keep track of those decisions and see them all in one area on what kind of decisions were made for the project overall. Um, you can create issues um, that come up during the project's life cycle. Um, you can also create opportunities, risks, you can create benefits, um, you can create a workspace within the project. Um, and, and a workspace really is just a collection of documents or items. So if, if the project is going to use a certain set of items, you can put that all into a workspace. If it's going to you know, use a certain set of documents, that can all go in the workspace so you can access everything in one area. You don't have to search for each object individually, pull it up one by one. You can throw it all into one workspace. It's in the project and it's there for you to see immediately. Uh, so um, some of this is just going to be very high level. So analytics, you know, I mentioned analytics. So this is kind of what analytics looks like at a very high level. So when you get into a project uh, and you get into the main project summary page, this is what it will look like depending on the status. Okay. So you'll have your, your project status, your top level task, your uh, all tasks for the project and then the status for each one of those tasks. Um, if there's any task with deliverables, any critical tasks, and then a Gantt chart. Okay of where you are in the project, what's been completed, what hasn't been completed, when things are due. Um, so that's all in your project summary page. And again, I will show you all that shortly. Next are just, uh, just some of the things that are included in here. So project risks, um, you can, uh, they're really created to identify problems. Um, so you can create a risk uh, before a project begins. Um, or you can create it as the project progresses, or you can create, create them at the end. Uh, it, it really doesn't matter. Um, there's sometimes you go into a project and you understand some of the risks that are going to be involved in the project. You can start those right off the bat um, before the project even begins. And some arise, you know, as you go through the project. Uh, maybe you, you went over budget on something, or maybe the resource wasn't available, or maybe a certain part wasn't available, whatever it may be. Uh, resource plan and pools. So this really has to do with um, resource management, with keeping track of people's time in the project. Um, so each resource request would detail out what skills are needed and what resource pools would be needed. And I'll explain resource pools in a little bit. Um, the request could also detail the standard cost per hour for the resource. And again, the resource is an employee or uh, a contractor. Um, and the number of full-time employees that would be needed to fulfill the request. Uh, again, I'll get into this in a little bit. I'm gonna leave it at this. This is just kind of an image of what it'll look like. Budgets, I kind of mentioned in the beginning, this is kind of how budgets will look like, the, the view. Um, budgets really keep track of the costs and the benefits for a project. So you can add a budget here. You can also, you can see on that screen, there's a tab for benefits on the top. You can also click on that benefits tab and then you can add all the benefits to the project. And again, I'll detail that out in the presentation. Again, benefits, I just uh, talked about that in the previous slide. So that it's kind of just showing you how benefits, again, you can show them by 
quarter, by month, by year, uh, whatever fashion you'd like, and you can edit each month or each week with the benefit amount for that week. Okay, so let me get into the video here for everyone. So this will kind of go fast and I'll, I'll kind of explain it as we go along here. Um, so before I really get this thing started, um, when you first log into the 3D Experience platform, this is your dashboard, okay? So everyone's going to have a different dashboard. This is what uh, mine looks like. Um, <clears throat> so I'll play the video and I'll kind of talk through it. I might pause here and there. Um, and again, we'll, we'll kind of go through questions at the end. So here in the beginning, I'm going to click on the compass in the upper left corner and then the project management application. Um, that takes me to the main page for the project management application. Um, you can see here on the main page, and I'll pause it here for a second. So on the main page, this is going to list all the projects that you have access to, anything that's uh, you're assigned to, you, you own, or you're uh, subscribed to. Okay, so that's going to be all listed here in this screen. So you can access any of those projects right from here. Um, before we kind of go on in the video as well, um, there is something called programs. You can see here on the left side, there is a programs icon or a uh, tab. <clears throat> and programs really are overarching, right? So you can kind of think of it as, um, you know, maybe a, a program could be, uh, you know, the house, a house, right? And the projects are, parts of your house, right? So they could be the living room, the, the bedroom, the kitchen, whatever it may be, right? So you create a program that's, you know, all encompassing. And then within that program, you create as many projects as you need or want, okay? And so I'm gonna kind of show you how that works here. So right now in this little, hand, we call it a hamburger icon, that's where you can create projects. So I'm gonna go into the programs tab, Click on that little star, star icon, name the name of your program right here. Um, the policy is always going to be defaulted to a program. That's what we're going to always leave it at. Same with the type. Um, so right here, I'm just creating a sample program. You can put in the description. Anything in red has to be entered in. Okay. Um, so after this, I think the click the OK button here, and then you'll see um, on the bottom here, it's going to say sample program right there shows sample program was created. So in order to see that program and to add projects to that program, we would click on sample program. So I'm going to go in, click on sample program, and here's kind of a dashboard view, okay? Just like I showed you for projects, this is the same thing for programs. You see your analytics there on the right side. This is a brand new program, so you're not going to see analytics right now. Um, this, that is where you will see them. So right now I'm going to go into the meetings tab here. Okay, just to show you, you can enter in meetings here, but let's go in and create a project. Okay, so I'm going to go into the project section. This is where you can enter in your projects. You click on the little hamburger icon, create project, create new, and then you enter in all your details here on the right side. Um, the name of the project, the project date, those are mandatory uh, fields. Everything else is optional. Um, so let's see here. So I think uh, description, I'll, I'll put something in. Calendar right here, you guys, is a, I'm going to pause it here. So there's an option for calendar. That's if you have your own internal calendar, okay? So if your work, if your workplace has their own calendar, maybe if some fiscal calendar, right? That's different than your, your standard calendar. Um, you can edit, you can enter that calendar in into your main system, into the main 3D experience uh, configuration section, and then that calendar is selectable here, okay? So the whole project is based off of your internal calendar, not standard date calendar. So in this, I'm not going to leave it. I don't have a, I don't have a specific calendar. A business unit is basically an organization. Um, so if you have a specific business unit that the project is going to be uh, coming from, you can select that here. So I'm going to select sample. Um, if there is a business goal that's been entered into the system, you can find it right here. I didn't enter anything in. Um, so I'm just going to click OK, and it's going to create this project. And here is that project dashboard we were talking about. So this is brand new, right? Um, all your metrics are there. Uh, you can see, again, this is brand new, so you're not going to really see much of anything at this point. But you can, on the left side, you can create your schedule. 
collaboration is who's going to be in there and what you're going to do with it. Details are the details of the project, but let's go into the schedule first and create one, right? So we've got this project and we want, I'm going to pause it for a second. So we got this project and we want to be able to create several different tasks for this project, right? So this project isn't, uh, you know, it's going to involve a lot. So we're going to have a, a beginning, middle and end somehow, right? So we're going to go in uh, and select the icon, the check mark icon for the project, and then the little star in the upper left corner, okay? And that will then create this task. And you can see under the word type, task is selected. So these are all tasks that need to be performed within the project. Um, you have a start date, you have an end date that you select. The duration is how many days this task will be. Um, Again, is the task mandatory or not? Yes, I am going to make it mandatory. Who's it assigned to? So who's going to take care of this task? I'm going to assign it to myself, and I'm not going to say there needs to be an approval. So bam, that one's going to get created. And it's going to go under. Okay, so now we have a, a task. Um, I'm going to go in and create a few more just to kind of fill up the project so you can see how it looks in a Gantt chart form and really how this thing works. Okay, so I'm going to create another task. Um, here and this is really probably the design yes the design of the model um, put in a description it's going to be a sub level i'm going to leave it at that and this duration um, we're not going to make just one day we're going to say that this design task is going to be 10 days okay so i'm going to go in start date is going to be may 13th and i'm going to choose the 26th i believe yes the 26th um, as my end date okay again task requirement it's mandatory the assignee i'm going to assign myself and again this will all be you know depending on what you have in your system this one i'm not going to have an approval as well i'm just going to say okay move on right i'm going to create some more here i'm going to pause it real quick because i just cut those out of here so you can see i created manufacture the model ship to the customer and close out the project Okay, so each task is showing here with its own ID. There's no deliverables. I didn't select any deliverables for anything just to make it simplistic. Um, the life cycle state that that project um, task is in is listed here. They're all in a draft state. So that's your initial state. It, nothing has been completed yet. It shows you how long the duration is of that specific task. And then overall at the top, it's 40 day project. Okay, starts on May 12th, ends on July 6th simple as that so let's continue this you can see if i want to go um <clears throat> so you can see all these things are listed here right now the first task is going to be the project kickoff okay so we need to get that thing going so let's go into the gantt chart view just so i showed you i wanted to show you how that looks so here's how the project looks okay haven't started it everything's been in the system it's all in a draft state it's all outlined it's ready to go and that's how it's going to look for you okay um, I'm not going to go into milestones or phase gates. There's just too much here. Um, so we'll go back to the structured view, back to this view, and I'm going to click on collaboration here on the left side. Okay. So this is where, before this project begins, I'm going to start scheduling several meetings. Okay. I need to have a kickoff meeting for this project. Okay. So in order for the project to start, I need a kickoff meeting. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to create a meeting. Um, same format as how you create a project, nothing different. Um, you can enter in your meeting location if you want, a description, all that can be entered in. Um, you're going to select your date. You're going to select what time it's going to start the meeting, the duration, and then you're going to say, okay. Okay, you can put in a conference call number. You can put in uh, a web address if it's like a go to meeting or something like that. Um, you can enter in as much data as you want here. Okay, um, it's just whatever is in red is what's required. So I'm going to go in and just create some more meetings, but as that's going on, you can watch that, but also talk to it. So as these meetings get created, right, um, we have the ability to add people to that meeting. Okay. And each person can be assigned a task for that meeting. When a meeting is created and it's ready. Okay. It's not ready to start, but it's ready. Okay. All the details of it have been taken care of. You can then send a notification to all people that are going to be in that meeting um, straight from the meeting tab. So you can click on a button, it'll send a notification via email to, if you have that set up, the email notifications, it'll send it to you in an email saying, hey, there's a meeting that's been created that you're involved in. You can click on that link. It'll take you straight to that meeting. 
Okay, and you'll see all the details of the meeting and when it starts, what the dial in info is and everything about it. Okay, so that's that's a pretty cool feature um, to to have. So you can see I've got different meetings here in approval, kickoff, reviewing. Um, I'm going to also create a discussion here. Okay, remember I told you everybody can see this. So I'm just going to create create a discussion for communication and it's really just going to say, hey, for every time we have a meeting, you know, please make sure you attach the agenda items and notes. Okay, to the meeting itself, because we want this to be documented. We want to see what's going on in these meetings. Are there any um, are there any discussions or side items that are coming up that we need to know about? And we need to track that somewhere. So I'm just going to create a discussion thread so people can see that when they go in. Okay, that there is some some form of uh, documentation that we need. So now I'll go into the execution tab. Okay, and again, this this tool has a lot to offer. Okay, there is an enormous amount that you can do in here. I'm showing you a very, very quick a snippet of just what it has. So there's assessments. So when a project is about to begin, you can create an assessment. Okay, so from the, and you can call it kind of like first assessment or initial assessment. So when the project begins, most likely everything's going to be in a good state. Okay, everything's going to be green. We have the right resources. We have the right financials. All the budgets are entered in. Uh, items are entered in. Meetings are scheduled. Everything is set. So all I'm doing here is just going in and putting in this basic information. Everything is green for this project. There's no issues. Everything is set. There's no risk, nothing like that. So I'm going to say, okay, and I'm going to pause it here for a second. And you can see under the resource column, the schedule column, the finance column, the risk column, all of them show green. Okay. Because I showed that this, everything is good with this project. So the overall here on the left next to the column author is green. So this project is in a good state. Okay. Initial assessment says, hey, we're good. And you can add additional assessments as you move along. Um, you can add issues. So if there's a, a problem that comes up, okay, as you go along in the project, you can add an issue. An issue is just like an, a problem that occurs. Okay. Uh, um, you also can do uh, your financials here. So again, I talked about budget. So this is where you can set up your budget. Um, you can set it up on a monthly, quarterly, or a weekly phase. And this budget is for your project, really. So here I've just gone in and created a quick budget. And now I'm going to add a cost item, okay, to that budget. And you can see it's either an expense cost item or an investment cost item. And I'll expand it here so you can see. So I'm going to say, um, I'm going to look for probably, I'm going to say compensation and benefits. Yep. So I'm going to select compensation and benefits. I'm going to say submit. That's going to add that line item there under it to sub level. And I'm going to add another cost item. And this one's going to be an investment. So you'll see, I'll click on that. But we could add another expense item, maybe. Maybe we'll end, add, add in supplies and tooling or rents and leases. Yep. So we'll add in some supplies and tooling, maybe some advertising as well. Throw that in. So that's all going to come under expense. Okay, so these are these are things against the project. This is our budget. We're also going to have an investment. So we're going to have plant and equipment. Okay, so we're going to select that and say submit. So now we've got all our budgeted items for the project. Okay, so we're going to go in, click on that little edit icon, and you can see for week 34, 35, 36, 36, and so on and so forth, right? That's all there. Everything right now has a $0 budget. So you can go in, just overwrite it, okay? So that's your budget, $1,500 for that week and so on and so forth. We're just going to create our budget now. Okay, that's how much we're budgeted to spend on a weekly basis for compensation and benefits. Okay, and I'll show you how to lock that budget and how someone can report against that. So I'm going to go in, I'm just going to make all these edits here. And please, I, I know this is fast, so please, um, Make sure you, you have your list of questions. We can go through that in a little bit here and you guys can ask any kind of questions. If you're not sure on something, you want to know capabilities, anything like that. Um, I'm here as a resource to help you guys and to educate you on the tool. <clears throat> so once all these uh, budgets are entered in, you have the ability to um, lock them. OK, so that means that now that budget is set. You cannot change it. You cannot do anything to it. All you can do to that budget now is track against it. 
Okay, so that'll be actuals. That, that's your actual transactions then. And I believe we'll get into that. Um, okay, so I created the budget, that's all set. Now I'm gonna go into benefits. And again, I told you we could create benefits. So what are the benefits of this project? Are there any benefits to it? Um, so I have my spending budget, but what about the benefits? What are we getting out of this project? Okay, so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna say that there's gonna be a, a growth. Um, and I'm gonna say incremental order. So we're gonna get more orders. So if we are able to uh, fulfill this project and everything goes really well, we're gonna expect incremental orders. So we're gonna expect more orders coming into the system. So at this point, I'm done, I entered in my benefit. Okay, this is not being shared with anyone, this financials, okay? This is a financial section. I'm gonna go in and share that with Keith. So now Keith has the ability to go into the financials and edit them, okay, before they get locked. That's all I'm saying by doing that. Otherwise, no one can touch it. So here's that freeze budget, okay? You do have the option now to freeze the budget. Are you sure you wanna freeze it? Yes, I'm sure. So now the budget is frozen. You can do nothing with it, okay? It's set, that budget is now set. Now, all you can do is go to the actual transaction section and start entering them in, okay? And that'll track against your budget. Um, let's see if this works here. I know I was having issues um, getting these in because I, I have a lot of different environments, but this is how you do it, really. I'm gonna just pause it here for a second. So you can enter in your transaction ID, what date the transaction took place, what's the description of it, what's your cost item? So what are we going against are we in the budget? Are we going against compensation and benefits? Yes. What was the purchase order number, if applicable? Don't have to enter it in. And how much? Okay, how much was it? I'm going to put in $1,800. I'm going to save it. Done. Move on. Okay, so now we're into, we've created the budget. We've done all that for the project. Um, you can see the schedule here. We'll go back to the schedule here for a second so you can see where we're at. Again, everything is still in a draft state. Okay, now the main thing we need to do is add people to the project. Nobody's in the project. So we go to the people's tab on the left and let's add some people to the project. Okay, everyone here right now, if you click on the edit icon, sorry, the video is going pretty fast. So we click on that edit icon and now we added these three individuals here to the project. Okay, so now they have access to the project and everything in there. The key is that this is, they are all given reader access, only a reader access. I don't want them to be a reader. I need them to do work in this project. I don't want them just to be able to see the data. I want them to be able to contribute to the data, add the data, okay? So I'm gonna go in, you click on that edit icon, and you're gonna change them all to a leader, okay? A leader has the ability to change, okay? I'm gonna keep Azeem as a reader, but everyone else is gonna be a leader in this case. I'm gonna disable the edit. That's all good to go. Now you go to your resource plan, okay? Again, remember I talked about resources. So this is where you can select what skill do I need for this project, okay? You can see, I'll, I'll click on this right here. I'll click on that little icon for business skill. And here's the skills, okay? You're gonna select in your company. Go, and there's your person, your preferred person that you're gonna select. Everything is here, okay? When's the start date and the end date? I'm, okay, and let me uh, let me go back here for a second. Right here is a number of full-time employees. So FTE means full-time employees. How many full-time employees am I requesting here? I'm requesting one, and I'm requesting this person right here, which is me. Okay, that's me. And I'm going to say that my standard cost per hour is $300 an hour. Okay, so in order to have me on the project, it's going to bill against at $300 an hour. I'm going to say okay. It's going to create that resource request. Okay, you can see REQ for request. Click on that, click on submit. That request is ready to go. Let's submit it. I'm gonna say, please allow us to use Ritesh for the project. Spell my name right there. Say done. And now that request has been submitted. So the owner of the project can now go into that by clicking on resource pools here on the left. I'm the owner of the project and you, you can see I'm, it's going so fast here. So we'll click on company name here because it's saying, hey, company name has an open request here that you need to approve. You can see the one. So I'm gonna click on company name here. It's gonna open up the resource request. Here's some that have already been fulfilled. Okay, these have been fulfilled. 
you can see uh, the state is completed on each three, the bottom three. The first one is the one I need. So I'm going to click on it, click the thumbs up. It's been approved now. Okay, I approved that resource request. So if I go back to the projects tab, click on the sample project for training, click on people. That's in there now. Okay, so uh, and here's the member timesheets, by the way. So now I want to go in and I want to report my time against the project. Click on that tab, go to timesheets, and then click on this icon right here. It's going fast, sorry. We'll go back here. Okay, so right here, when you say create a timesheet, you're gonna select your week. What week do you wanna select the timesheet for, okay? I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna say the week of the 24th, say okay, and you can see now, that's and I created a bunch more uh, in the background. So all these timesheets have been created. Well, I want to open up the May third to the May twenty first, May uh, May twenty first to the ninth, uh, the twenty seventh. I open that one up. Okay, let's go back here. Right here. Okay, when I click on it here at the top, it'll bring it up here in the bottom. Okay, I'm going to click on that. It's going to open up the timesheet. Okay, so what did you do? during that week. Okay, these are all the available tasks that had to be completed. They were assigned to me. Okay, so I'm gonna click on, hey, I did the kickoff meeting. Okay, so we'll wait for that to get clicked down here. Let's see what's happening here. Okay, so we cannot, we, we can't schedule that yet because here, let me show you, let me explain. So right now, nothing can be done with the project. You can't put any time against the project. Nothing can happen. Main reason, you see all these states right here. They're all in a draft state. That means the project hasn't even begun yet. So if the project hasn't begun, how can I record time against it, right? So I'm just going in right now, selecting all of these tasks. Uh, you don't have to do all of them. You can just do a couple of them. Um, so I'm going to select the task that I want. I'm going to click on the edit icon. I'm going to change from draft to to do. Okay, so now these two tasks have started. So we've created the tasks. We're going to go in. I'm going to disable the edit icon here in a second. So we go in. Okay, we go into this task. And you can see the assignees, okay? There's no one assigned here. Nobody's assigned, just me, okay? Collaboration, again, you can put decisions, discussions, meetings, everything there. So there's so many options here on the left side, you can see. That's the reason I kind of came into the screen. It's just to show you the options that you have available to you, okay? You can create risks, you can share it, you can create issues, you can do a lot from this screen on its own. There's a resolve by section as well. Um, so if you resolve that task with something, uh, you can do that there. So let's go back now to the timesheets. Okay, so now we've created that task. We started it. I'm going to go back to the May, the May 21st timesheet. Open that one up. Click on the tasks icon. And now that project kickoff is available for me. I'm going to click on that, say submit. Okay, and you can see now that's all available. Click on the edit icon. I'm gonna say that on Tuesday, I worked for one hour on the project kickoff. I'm gonna say save and disable the edit icon. And then I'm gonna say submit. Okay, I'm gonna click on the, click on the boxes here at the bottom. Okay. So it's just saying, are you ready to submit? Yes, I am. So that timesheet submitted. I'm saying, hey, I'm submitting my timesheet for the week. I don't have any other time. And you can see now the in approved section is showing that timesheet. It click on yes, it creates it, okay? I'm gonna say, yes, I've approved this timesheet. Say done, and now that is marked, okay? So that time has been recorded against the project and against the budget. 
So now when I go back to the project summary report tab, you can see everything. You can see a lot more here, okay? You can see what's going on with all the projects. This is the sample one that we have, right? You can see all the pending tasks for that one. Everything is all seeable. So we're gonna go to sample temp project for training again, go back into that. You can see all the deliverables, pending issues, assessments, efforts, all the analytics are here for you. Lots of different analytics. I mean, it's it's a pretty cool feature. I'm almost done here, Jordan. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna go back into projects. I'm gonna find that project and you can see what's been completed, what's pending, what's overdue, everything is showing. Here's your schedule again. And you're gonna see this is in work. 12.5% of it has been completed. Go back into that task. I'm gonna promote that task and say, hey, that kickoff meeting is now completed. Okay, we completed it, we're done with it. I don't need to do anything else here. Go back to your main schedule and you're gonna see, there it is. It's completed, 100% done. So I put in my one hour that was budgeted, I completed it, I recorded against it. Here's your Gantt chart view of it now as well. You can see right there, project kickoff, 100% completed, and then so on and so forth as you go on. Right back to the main level, okay? Here's all your tasks. So there's a little bit more color to it now that I've done something in the project. Um, and then you can see your Gantt chart view here at the bottom.